Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing okay. So let, let me set the, 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 let me paint the picture for you, right? You shave, you shower, right? You get your car washed, you got a new outfit, you're looking good, you're smelling good. That girl that you've been trying to pursue for months and months and months, finally turned around and said, yeah, I'll go out with you, right? You're feeling good about yourself. Everything is fantastic, right? You can't wait. You pull up to the door, you ring the bell, you open up the door, and your sister is standing there, right? That's exactly what happened today in the market. And that's the best way I could possibly um, possibly describe what I saw today from three quarters of the day. Um, I, I thought yesterday was a perfect, I'm talking about a perfect scenario of a really good, important, I think that's the best way of saying it. Not did I believe that the NASDAQ 100 and the Dow, just, just all the indexes, just the market in general should rally today. I thought it was crucial. I thought it was an incredibly important thing because I, I felt that the way we held, right? Well, at least the way the bulls held yesterday is rising uh, 20 minutes, 20 days support. It was very, very important that they built, right? They really, really build on this massive hammer that they put on. So it wasn't a case of, should we rally? I, I felt we were gonna rally today, okay? It was more of a, a case of the market needs to make a stand, take out the previous day's levels, build on those levels and close very, very strong. And, you know, when you looked at the market today, we, we talked about a, a kind of a, a scenario that I wanted to see from, from today. I, th I think I started talking about it towards the end of uh, the video yesterday. I wanted to see a market because, again, we had a thousand point rally in the Dow. So I, I wanted to see the futures down, you know, 100, 200 points on the Dow just because of profit taken. And I felt that if the market opened up lower today, and some of these stocks would be down, you know, would be down three, four, five dollars a share. What I thought in a perfect world was early shorts, or at least late shorts from yesterday, right? But early shorts today would get trapped. They would go red to green, put in opening range highs at 10 o'clock, retrace, get more shorts trapped, confirm the 10 day, confirm the 10, uh, 10 o'clock candle, and just explode for the rest of the day. And somewhere along the line, Somebody t forgot to tell the bulls, right? They, they forgot to tell the bulls because if you look at the if you look at the watch, if you look at the checklist coming into our wants for today, we got everything. Okay, uh, we got the gap down. Everything was down pre market, not a lot. Some things were down more than others. For example, like an Amazon, but again, not a lot. Okay, I didn't think it was tremendous. I thought it was a little off somewhere, down more than others. But I said, all right, you know, let's see what happens. So we got the gap down. Okay, we got the early morning trap. We got the red to green. We got the initial move, right? We got the initial move into 10 o'clock channels. And then when I started seeing right, right after that was a complete snooze fest. And I, I, I tweeted at some point, you know, during the mid morning and I said, well, I, I guess the bulls won. I, I guess, right? You just couldn't get, you know, you just couldn't get an idea again. It, it, today's day felt like something was off, right? That there was some stocks that were very strong this morning. If you look at some names, uh, you could see from just from the pre-market action, some names were really, really strong. Apple had a big move. You had Nvidia had a really, really big move. Again, obviously, a lot. Of, we'll talk about what happened after Nvidia and Shop. You know, Shop had a really, really big move as well. You know, right into uh, right into supply. But you started seeing a lot of names that were lagging. Tesla was lagging all day. Facebook was lagging all day, for the most part, right? Netflix was lagging all day. And again, it was it actually the most ironic part. Netflix actually uh, saved my day to the upside uh, when it finally woke up. You started seeing 450, 460 calls. Again, we'll, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Uh, but you started seeing a good 
amount of tired names very, very quickly. And the last thing that the market wanted to see, at least the bulls wanted to see, was the market to get gassed out around 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock in the morning today felt like a two o'clock in the afternoon. There was absolutely no juice. Again, you had names that woke up like Roku, like Amazon. Again, we'll get into uh, the individual pivots in, in a second. So again, there was some value today. But again, you're looking good, you're feeling good, you smell good, you open up the door, and your sister's standing there. Again, maybe some of you guys are into that stuff, but I know most of us are not. And the most important part of what I kept on saying throughout the morning was the bulls better not drop the ball here, okay? Because again, remember, we're not talking about trading for tomorrow. Trading for tomorrow is all about sentiment, okay? It's the ability to build on levels. It's the ability to negate bad news. It's the, it's the ability to, again, keep on trapping late, late shorts over and over and over again and rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, start taking it highs. So the idea that, you know, when we were up about 150, 200 points, I said, man, this just doesn't feel like a rally. It just doesn't. You could look all across the board, um, just nothing feels right. BYND went red, uh, NVIDIA at some point went red. Every, everything was giving up gains. Boeing, you can see slowly but surely giving up gains as well. And I said, man, it just, it just doesn't feel right. And this is when the market was up 150, 170 points. And then towards the end of the day, uh, I, I logged off early. I logged off early uh, around 2.30 or so. Again, I'm, I'm trying to just to give myself mental breaks uh, towards the last 90 minutes of the day. So I logged off early, and uh, I think it was Lozandro that, that texted me. He goes, well, if you thought the market, you know, basically the market, paraphrasing, the market rally was weak at 150, we just went red on the day. So it's not what the bulls want at, at all. Uh, I, I think the bulls did a horrific job today uh, keeping control, okay? I think that they really could have stamped their, you know, stamped their brand in status quo, and frustrating the bears more and more and more. But again, when you see what happened today and when you see the final scoreboard, but more important, you saw headlines towards the end of the day. And again, they blamed the Trump uh, comments from China. These stocks were weak way before the end of the day. Okay, so again, I understand there's dissemination of news from different outlets and they have to kind of put a bow on what happened today. But if you were trading for the rest, you know, if you were trading for the whole day, you saw the weakness. You saw the weakness starting around lunchtime and there was no emphasis there was no excitement uh there was no uh fomo there was nothing there, were, there was basically you with your sister doing the two-step shuffle and billy jean playing in the background that was it there was nothing to get excited about so when you look at how the names ended today if you look at all across the board from where they started to where they ended again if you're a bull this is not what you want to see if you look at the charts one by one by one again how many times is Tesla going to try to get above the range? It keeps on failing. Again, not only did it fail to take out the previous day's high, again, it lost the 5 and the 10 day. Again, that's bearish. We've been talking about the, how important the 5 and the 10 is over and over again. If you look at Amazon, okay, again, look where it got rejected. It got rejected on the 5 and the 10. This is bearish. This is not good stuff. Netflix actually had a pretty pretty good trade today. Look where it got rejected. It got rejected right on the 5-day moving average, inverted hammer, one after another, after another. At, at when, right when I logged off at 2.30, I said, wow, I really like, you know, I really like shop tomorrow above, you know, if it starts confirming 771, 772. I mean, look at the stock, sold off 30 points. Again, very, very close to confirming this rising wedge again. So again, look at the names that should have participated today, aggressively participated, and look what happened on the close. Again, you can blame China, you can blame Trump, you can blame the market makers, right? Again, the whole market maker, the algorithms, right? You gotta blame somebody. Why can't just stocks go down, right? Why can't stocks go up? Why, why does everything need to be a reason? Again, when there's more buyers and sellers, the stock goes up. When there's more sellers and buyers, the stock goes down. So again, when you look at charts tonight and you see the names that should have rallied, right? that needed to rally, that needed to reclaim big, big levels, they all failed. And again, look at BYND, it closed right, this is the first close below this whole rising support. Again, what do you wanna be long the stock tomorrow, right? Do you really need to be long the stock tomorrow? And that's the point. It's not where you, you love the stock for long term, it's not where you think the stock is gonna be a year from now, it's all about today's close. And if you look at today's close, 
based on for the last three days, for the exception of yesterday, right? Literally for the exception of yesterday, that the Bulls had a phenomenal job on a V-shaped intraday recovery. And today set up for a monster, monster rally. Again, butt fumble, Mark Sanchez, butt fumble. So going into tomorrow's session, again, how do you feel good if you're a bull? It's a very honest question. Again, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear. I trade both sides of the market. But how can you feel good about being a bull for tomorrow? Again, anything could happen in this market. As we see every single day, the George Costanza market is real. Nothing needs to make sense. Again, we could be talking about tomorrow on the weekend update saying, wow, I can't believe the, you know, the, the NASDAQ rallied 300 points. It's all on the table, okay? This is where we are right now. But again, going into tomorrow, you have to have an opinion, okay? Again, the market's telling you, what, if you're looking at charts tonight, you kind of see what the opinion is, right? You have to have an opinion. You have to have a bias. And again, I am not going to anticipate what's going to happen tomorrow. But again, if, you're, if your eyes and you, and, you, and you can see, you know, the best technical indicator is your eyeballs, right? It's the eyeball test. Before you start incorporating old studies and this, that, and the third, you have to trust your eyeballs. And if your eyeballs are looking at every single chart today and they're saying they close below the five, they close below the 10, they close below the 20, again, where is the emphasis to the upside tomorrow? Again, time will tell. We can't put the cart in front of the horse. But again, at least let's be prepared from what we believe is going to happen next. And again, if you guys, if you look at Mon uh, Tuesday session and Wednesday session, right? Uh, again, any single time we saw closes below the five, 10 day moving average. And some of these names kind of gave up pretty much all their gains uh, from the last couple of days as well and, and had put in their lowest close. Like for example, like B up BYND put in its lowest close in this whole formation, right? So again, gun to your head. Does it go to does it go tomorrow to 130 or is it, the, or is it possibly going to test the 116 from the previous day's low? Again, right? Co coin flip, coin flip. But again, technical analysis and collecting data tells you uh, there is an emphasis tomorrow to the downside. Again, we're not anticipating. Uh, we are not forecasting. We're going to wait very, very patiently tomorrow uh, for confirmation and again, trade uh, accordingly. So if you look at today's pivots, I mean, yeah, of course there were things to do, but it wasn't the day that I wanted, okay? It wasn't the day that I thought was going to be really gung-ho, guns blazing, market rally. Again, this is where the whole butt fumble from Mark Sanchez, they just dropped the ball. They really did. So uh, early pivots here, uh, workday, right? Uh, 180, 150, 182 needs to build. Uh, workday exploded. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught workday. So here is the 181. Uh, here is the whole area right here, this whole sneaky channel here, uh, 81, uh, 8150, 82 exploded. I mean, the stock did very, very well, uh, went to like 86, 87 dollars, uh, very, very strong. Uh, Dollar Tree, again, earnings play 96, 90, 97, needs to build uh, DLTR, right? So here's the 97, right? Here's the 97 right here, here's the 97. And Dollar Tree did well, almost went to 100, so you know, that was fine as well. Uh, and again, I kept on saying, look. Look, you already know, okay? You already know. Obviously, uh, Boeing never got to this uh, 59 level, but you already know. If I'm already putting Dollar Tree and Workday, right, pre-market pre -market list ahead of like Amazon first or Netflix first or Tesla first, it kind of shows you, you know, what can possibly happen or what not happen in the day. We're talking about value uh, versus uh, versus forcing setups that are not over there. Uh, Boeing never made it up there. Uh, Netflix, I took Netflix. There was actually a sneakier pivot uh, we'll talk about Netflix in a second. It, it went through this area here, went to 423, but uh, I'll show you a pivot that we got long uh, off the uh, second entry, off the 418.50 break. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, that actually saved my day. Uh, Apple, I screwed up big time. So I bought Apple, I bought Apple, and you know everything was so weak. It went up like 20 cents or so. It did nothing, okay? It came right back in. It gave me a lifeline and I sold it, completely butchered it, lost 25 cents in the trade, came back in. And it took like three times and the, finally, the stock finally exploded. For all you guys who, who didn't screw this up, I did. I, you know, again, 25 cents is nothing, but my point is I did screw it up. For all you guys who did, take, did keep the trade, great job. I completely uh, messed this one up. Uh, BYND, again, not a big move. And again, you can clearly see where stocks are getting gassed up. 126 rejection twice. Uh, needs to build again, not a big move at all. And this is again, you, you're collecting data. So here's the 26, right? Stock only went up, you know, 60 cents. That's it, 60 cents. But this is why we always say when a stock stalls out, 
especially if you're trading, you know, if you're trading in intraday cycles, you got to use break even as you stop. Again, you can't sit there and pray that the stock recovers. Again, data is telling you that it's weak, it's stalling out. Again, uh, that break even trade is going to be very, very important. Uh, these two pivots triggered at the close during the, during the sell off. Uh, if you did catch it, great. Um, you know, Netflix went down a couple of dollars. Uh, Tesla went down like three, four bucks. But again, I wasn't around for this. I didn't see it. Um, workday, again, workday, take on the way up. Nice move there uh, as well. So uh, Tesla, right? Tesla, and, and I said, and it, it finally went. It finally did go. To all, 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 to all concern, it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. 821 build for a quick move to 825. Uh, that is supply. And again, you know, these are the key levels here. So it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. Again, for all you guys who did take it, again, it was, a, it was a quick scalp. Again, there was nothing there. So here's the 821, right? Here's the 821, and it stopped at 2475. I said 8, 825 stopped at 2475. Again, you have to know your levels where stock's potentially going to stop. Uh, Amazon was actually a pretty good move before the sell-off. Uh, 2426 needs to build. Here was Amazon. Um, here was Amazon. I mean, not a bad move at all. Uh, you got a 10, 11 point move on Amazon. Here is the 2426, and it went to 2437 uh, before again big big reversal uh, to the downside. So that was fine, right? There was nothing wrong with that. Uh, here is the trade that you know I finally I finally got something going on the day. Um, 41840 needs to build. Uh, June buyers were coming in for the 450 calls, also for the 425 weeklies, for the 430 weeklies. Uh, Netflix actually had a pretty good move. Um, so we got long this thing uh, here. You know, we got long this thing right off this level here, and it actually went to like you know 422 and change. So it was a pretty good trade. I entered it twice. I uh, caught it for about a dollar sixty in runners and stuff. Dollar sixty, dollar sixty five in runners. Again, not a big move again, but. Again, that was the theme of the day. It's again, feeling good, looking good, car washed, you're on your date with your sister. Again, that's just the reality. Um, still valid again towards the end of the day. Again, tight session. We knew that before the open. Again, there was nothing that was surprising us about today's session. And again, here was the move on Netflix, take on the way up. Uh, Amazon spiking, take on the way up. Uh, 87 on deck on workday. Um, you know, I said, look, there's a shot against the 243 and it failed. Uh, you know, again, went up $11, if you can say it failed, you know, God willing. Uh, you know, again, Tesla, take all the way up, 825 is supply, it stopped at 824.75, and that's it. I mean, that's basically it. So, again, you have to know, like yesterday was super duper aggressive. Uh, like I said, we came in yesterday 100% sell bias, okay? Um, you know, I got to say, I'm 80-20. You got to say, I'm 80-20 sell buys going to tomorrow. Look, is there a couple of are there a couple of names that I kind of like for tomorrow? You know, Roku actually held up okay if it could confirm the five-day moving average. You know, that looks okay. But again, when you start looking to the downside, right? You start looking at beyond, the lowest close. And you started looking at Amazon close right on the rising support, man. I, I mean, I this thing confirms, boy. Right? You look at Tesla, lowest close in this whole formation. Can it test the previous day's low? You know, Netflix, again, Netflix is, you know, one candle away from testing yesterday's low as well. So, again, you can't feel great if you are a bull. Um, I could see a choppier session tomorrow, okay? Uh, but, again, if you gun to my head, 70, 30, 80, 20, I'm, I am definitely uh, sell biased until the market proves me wrong tomorrow. I want to give the bears. Uh, the benefit of the doubt. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Tomorrow's the last day of the trading week. Uh, again, just a quick reminder, on Saturday, uh, four or five gentlemen uh, within our webinar who do trade options, again, I'm an options novice, I know nothing about options, uh, they will be uh, kind of hosting um, kind of a roundtable discussion of how they use uh, options to trade these pivots uh, on Saturday, I think we're doing it Saturday at 10 o'clock Eastern time. So for all you guys watching this, uh, again, just keep an eye out uh, for that as well. Other than that, guys, God bless everybody. Love you all, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.